Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Were you paying attention to the words of that hymn we just sang? Especially that last stanza. Isn't this great? Jesus, send your angel legions when the foe would us enslave. Hold us fast when sin assaults us. Come then, Lord, your people save. Overthrow at last the dragon. Send him to his fiery grave. Did you know that uh, the most common uh, name for God in the Bible is God, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, is what that means. Yahweh Tzibaoth in Hebrew, the Lord of armies. You, you remember saying that word Sabaoth uh, sometimes in our hymns and in our liturgy, the Lord God of Sabaoth. Remember that? That's the Hebrew word. It means armies. And what kind of armies? Armies of heaven. Armies of angels who fight for God with his power, with his strength, with his saving purpose to rescue all of us, to rescue us with God's own salvation. But we have to back up. Why do we need rescuing? Well, the story for us begins when we are born into this deep, dark world. And we live our lives in the darkness of sin and death, under the shadow of sin and death. We know where the sin and death came from. It came from our first parents, Adam and Eve who were deceived by the ancient serpent, the devil, Satan, and joined him in the, on the dark side, the dark side of the rebellion against God. And so we all are born into this darkness of sin and death. And we know I hardly need to preach to you about the darkness of this world that we live in. I hardly need to preach to you, but I'm going to remind you of the slavery that we are in. That we sit all our lives chained up by sin and by guilt, chained up by our own selfishness and greed and all the wrong things that we do. Charles Dickens uh, pictured this in the famous story, A Christmas Carol. And whether you've uh, read the uh, novel or whether you've seen a movie version of it, uh, Charles Dickens uh, has this character, Ebenezer Scrooge. You remember Scrooge, right? And Ebenezer, he, he sees this heavenly, it's a heavenly vision. He sees his former business partner, Jacob Marley. He comes to him, Jacob, who had died seven years earlier. And Jacob is all chained up. He's appearing like this spectral ghost. And he's all chained up with these chains. And he's got this big steel ball, you know. And he's dragging it along. And, uh, and Ebenezer is frightened by the sight of this ghost of his partner. And he recognizes him that it's Jacob Marley. After Jacob says, don't you remember me, Ebenezer? But Ebenezer says, Jacob, why are you all chained up with those heavy chains and, and that big weight? What's going on, Jacob? And Jacob says, I think you know about this chain, Ebenezer. I think you know exactly what this ball and chain is. I forged it during my lifetime with all of my selfishness, with all of my greed. This is all my guilt. This is, these are all my sins. And I built this chain link by link. You should know about such a chain, Ebenezer, he says, because yours was just as big as mine seven years ago. And you've been adding links to it for these seven years now, too. Oh boy, Ebenezer, your chain must be a ponderous chain. Your chain is pretty serious, Ebenezer. And so Dickens pictures for us this kind of, we know that we are in bondage because of our own, all the things that we do. We separate ourselves from God. But it's also that we're sitting in this deep, dark prison all chained up and we have a captor, a, a, a jailer who keeps reminding us 
of all of our sins and our, our heavy chains that are on us. He's like an evil prosecuting attorney from, from a movie, from a courtroom scene. One of those bad guys who's always pointing in the face of the defendant saying, you're guilty, you're guilty, look at what you've done. And this is what the accuser, Satan, did you know the name Satan is Hebrew? It's a, uh, it's a nickname that means the accuser. And Satan, the accuser, is constantly pointing in our face saying, you've deserved every one of, of, of these uh, links of your chain that is binding you up. That's your sin. And you have sinned against your God. You've sinned against your fellow human beings. You've even sinned against yourself and all the things that you've said and done. And you deserve to be in this darkness and nobody should love you and nobody should forgive you. Especially not God. How could he forgive what you have done? And we live in this kind of darkness. And we can't help but listen to the voice of the accuser. Because we know that we've deserved every one of the links of our chain that binds us. We know we have sinned against God and against our fellow human beings and against ourselves. We know that what the accuser speaks is the truth. And I know that I don't deserve for anybody to love me. I don't deserve for God to forgive me. I know that. And so I can't help but believe the words of the accuser and to say, I'm worthless. I'm nothing. I, I deserve to be here in the darkness of this dungeon. I deserve death, the death that's awaiting me. And you know, all the world, we all feel it. There are people all around us. Have you noticed a lot in the news lately? There are people committing suicide all over the place in our society. And it's not about gender or age or anything. There are people of every age group, male and female, they are killing themselves because they see life as hopeless and they see their own lives, their own selves as hopeless and worthless. And we know that's why they're committing suicide. And we know we see people struggling every day with depression, with all kinds of challenges in life. And we say, I know exactly how you feel because I've been there too. But is there good news for us? Suddenly in our deep dark dungeon, a light appears. The prophet Isaiah says, On those, Behold, those sitting in the, in the land of darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in the land of the shadow of death, behold, a light has dawned. In our deep dark dungeon of despair, all of a sudden, a brilliant light we see. And it's strange to us. And we, see, we say, what's going on? What's going on? And all of a sudden, the chains that are binding us just fall off. And the door of our prison bursts open and stands wide open for us. And we hear a voice from the light. Arise, child of God. You are set free. Go now from this prison. Go quickly. Get up and go. And we may not understand. What is this good news that's coming to us? What is this light? Who is this messenger who's declaring to us, now your chains are broken. Now you are set free. Now the door stands open to you. Go, leave this prison. It is a messenger from God. An angel. And we see with John the heavenly vision presented to us in the book of Revelation, especially chapter 12 today, our epistle reading. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies has come to our rescue. And what we are seeing is his salvation breaking through into our deep, dark dungeon of despair. Listen to this. Now, a war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. 
and the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. God has come. He has sent his heavenly army, his angel army, armies to rescue us. And our chains fall off and the door of our prison stands open to us. And we say, what is this? How, how can this be? I, don't, I deserve to be in that dungeon of despair. I deserved every link of that chain, remember? How can I be free? And the voice from heaven says in Revelation, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. That's the light breaking into the darkness. That's the light that we see that's so strange to us. And we say, how can this be that I could be free? Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. That's the good news. And the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. The prosecuting attorney who is pointing his finger at us and saying, you, you have sinned against God. You deserve death, punishment and death. He is pushed out of the way. And who pushed him out of the way? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who took our place. He took our place. He took our guilt, our sin, all those chains that bound us up. And he was bound. That's those nails in his hands and his feet on the cross. He was the one that was bound in our place. He is the one suffering in the darkness. He is the one suffering under God's wrath and punishment. He is the one who takes the death penalty in our place. And he pushes the devil out of the way and he says, you can't accuse these people any longer because now the accusations with which you accuse them are falling on me. And the sins which you would accuse them of, I have taken upon myself. They're mine. You deal with me, accuser, Satan. You deal with me. And just as God prophesied back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he said, actually, he was talking to the serpent, interestingly enough. He's talking to the serpent and he said, Oh, serpent, you will crawl on your belly in the dust all the days of your life. But the seed, the seed of the woman, he will come and you will strike his heel. That's what happened when Jesus died on the cross but he will crush your head. Jesus has come and he crushed the head of the serpent. He took away the power of the accuser by taking our sins upon himself, by taking our death and our punishment. So Jesus takes our place. We take his place. His place is out there, outside the dungeon, in the freedom of the light of God's salvation, in the freedom of being the children of God, in the freedom of because we are set free by Christ. We live in God's salvation. We've been saved. We are now, we belong to the kingdom of God. His rule is reigning on earth and he is governing all things. But that doesn't mean life is easy. In fact, it's, uh, the revelation goes on. Uh, it says, And they, God's people, have conquered the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We've been saved by Jesus. For they love not their lives even unto death. Now we're willing to give up our lives for others, just as Jesus has done for us. But it goes on. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and all you who dwell in them. That's us. Our dwelling place is in heaven with God, remember? Jesus took our place, and we got his place. Our place is in heaven. We are heaven citizens. We are children of God belonging in his house. And so we rejoice with the heavens. But it also says, and here's our challenge, 
But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The devil still prowls around on this earth. Peter, St. Peter says he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for whom he might devour. Why? Because he knows that his time is short, that his final judgment is coming, that he is going to be cast to his eternal destruction in the lake of fire, and he wants to bring with him anybody that he can. And if he could ruin and destroy the church of Christ, if he could drag away from God some of his own children that he loves, oh boy, he would love that because then he's hurting God. He's breaking God's own heart by stealing away some of God's own children, kidnapping them and bringing them down to destruction with him. That's what the devil would like to do. But we need to keep in mind he is defeated. He has no power over us or any of God's children. He doesn't have power over anybody that Jesus died on the cross for. And that is every single human being on this planet. And so we reach out to our friends and neighbors and we say, we see the darkness that you're living in. We understand about the despair that you feel. We understand about that depression. We understand the hurts that you're going through. We, we go through it too. But we have good news. And we want you to know that good news. That your chains are falling off. That Jesus has set you free. And now the door stands open to you. You do not need to remain here in this deep, dark dungeon of despair, but Jesus has set you free. Come with us now. Enjoy the light of God's salvation, the freedom of the children of God. Come with us now into God's own house where we celebrate all that he has done for us. For now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. And so rejoice, O heavens, and all who dwell in them, even you and me. Amen. May God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.